Okay, guys, welcome <laughs> to the Backpacker TV live show where we teach you how to trust the trail. My name is Scott. Hey, guys, I'm Ariane. And thank you so much for joining. Today, yeah. we have a great show. We're going to talk about trail magic versus hiker feed on the Appalachian Trail mm -hmm. and how that's kind of starting to change. We have never heard of hiker feed before, but perusing the internet, there's been some blog posts mm -hmm. written about, hey, is it leave no trace? Are you ruining people's wilderness experience by providing trail magic? What are the hikers expecting what to receive? What are the hikers expecting, and right? And what do they want the hikers to receive? Right, so we ran into that. that. We're gonna talk about that on our show today. Yeah. And, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about going live in the outdoors and um, the challenges that we have faced and um, how we're not gonna change anything. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna talk about that. And so, oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah, really. So let's get ready. Let's do the Backpacker TV live show. Ah. Okay, so um, let's talk about trail magic. So we did trail magic this weekend on the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. And had a blast. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. oh, Absolutely. Have so much more about that. In just so we oh, fed about a hundred yeah. through hikers um, and things were going mm -hmm. well. We did it on Saturday mm -hmm. and then on Sunday um, we had a GATC. That's a Georgia uh, ATC member. It's a club. but Appalachian um, Trail Conservancy. Appalachian Trail Conservancy. And they are the club that maintains the Georgia mm -hmm. section of the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. And... Um, um, I've ran into a, a lot of Ridge Runners um, before on the Appalachian Trail, no biggie. Um, when I did my through hike in, in 2003, they were sitting up on top of Springer Mountain telling me about bears. So they're great people. They re they're, they're, they really want to they, educate you on the AT. Absolutely. And they play a major, what I was about to say is they play a major role in directly connecting with all the through hikers and educating them specifically on Leave No Trace um, because not everybody is aware of the, the Leave No Trace principles and, and more directly how it affects things right. um, before they set on the trail. So they are they are one-on-one -on -one, um, spending five days a week out there backpacking with the hikers to educate. So it really is, you know, once I wanted to be a Ridge Runner. Yeah, no, so, no, I mean, no, it's no. They do, they, do, they do a lot of good work. They do great um, work. But so, kudos, you guys. Kudos. So, um, so on Saturday, um, or I'm, I'm sorry, on Sunday, we were setting up, and, and the Ridge Runner came in. He was mm -hmm. uh, camping at Hawk Mountain Shelter, and they've done some trail maintenance at Hawk Mountain Shelter mm -hmm. uh, for AT through hikers. Uh, they've closed some camping areas, and you know they're trying to. It's really a mess over there, but they're they put it in a new uh, privy, and they're they're really trying to keep that mm -hmm. place clean. So the Ridge Runner came up to us, and he said, "Well, you know." If you could get off the trail and do trail magic, that would be great. And we don't really call it trail magic anymore. We call it hiker feeds. You're not opinionated about this subject. No, no, at I'm all. just I'm trying to be objective. And so <laughs> he's explaining to me how like my my seven years of doing trail magic <sighs> wasn't really trail magic. It's really called hiker feeds. And I went, What? And so um he explained to us how trail magic is is becoming a little bit of an issue on the trail. Yes. Because of how many people are participating and giving food to the hikers. Now, he has a good argument, but there's also another side of the story on, on that whole issue. So he, he refused to call it trail magic, first of all. <laughs> Which <laughs> you I would mean, not call a trail magic. I mean that. that I mean that takes some. Um, what what's the word I'm looking for? Um, anyway, maybe we should back up a little bit and explain for those that are unaware what trail magic is. Yeah, what go ahead trail and magic define that. is. So, so trail magic has been along for uh, been around for a long time and Ever. it's been referred to, to trail magic and and those providing trail magic are referred to trail angels a angels so there's there's a there's a lot of um that's been around forever and it, it's not just limited to the at but it is it is indirectly um i i what's the word i'm looking for i'm losing my words i've had too much coffee um it is notorious on the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. So, a uh, trail magic is defined to is defined at by the ATC specifically as unexpected 
or random acts of kindness. It is the quintessential part of the Appalachian Trail experience for many long distance hikers. Right. Um, trail magic comes in many, many, many forms. Many forms. Um, whether it could be a shuttle, it could be a ride into town, it could be you know you lost your gear and someone gives you a piece of their gear. It, it could be a, a, providing a, food on the trail. Yeah, hundred million different things just to and help that through hiker. And it's not limited hiker, right? to anything yeah. exactly. Um, and so, you know, trail magic. That's kind of a, what it's defined as. Hopefully, we've defined it a little well. Yeah, I think so. Um, so every year, we take people out. A lot of groups in Georgia take people out and um, allow them to provide trail magic for the through hikers coming through at a, at a certain station point, yep. right? Yep. Um, and, a, and the hikers, the, the through hikers are very aware of what trail magic is. They've, they've heard... Um, it's part of the folklore. Oh, it's absolutely. Of, of, of absolutely. Hiking. You know, when you plan your through hike on the Appalachian Trail, you know, you, you want to experience trail magic. I know I did when I hiked it. Um, and it's just all part of the folklore, all part of the culture. Right. And it doesn't make any difference whether it's an apple. I mean, when I did the uh, AT, um, I had Boy Scouts that were feeding us right down from Springer Mountain at the Springer Mountain parking lot. So while it's a designated spot for the, the groups that come and do these things or the individuals that come and do these things, it is unexpected for the hiker to stumble across it. Yeah. Um, and that's where the magic in it right. comes, Absolutely. comes along. So hopefully we've described that. Now you can go back to your... So, <laughs> so as we're providing, and so when we do trail magic, um, again, been doing it for seven years. So, um, you know, we just have, you know, chips, cookies, we made hot dogs. Um, we always provide, um, hot beverages, hot beverages, coffee, whether it's cider. coffee, hot yeah. apple cider, hot chocolate, uh, lots of fresh fruit, Pick a lot of yeah. fresh fruit, because you never know what the weather's going to be, especially yeah. in the beginning of March, man, it could be snowing. Well, you know, I mean, James, you've been there when it's snowing before, right? Because <laughs> um, I was with you. So it, it, it could be snowing, could be raining, could be icing. I mean, who knows, you know, what it is. So we always bring hot beverages. If nothing else, you know, give them a hot apple cider and, and get them on their way. So um, it, to me, that's trail magic. We also always talk about leaving no trace. So we always, we have a, we have a, a phone charging station where you can charge your phone. Um, and then we have a big garbage bag. So for, for even for AT hikers that have already maybe eaten two meals, we're like, hey, let's let's get your trash out of your pack and and mm -hmm. put it in a garbage mm -hmm. can. So then we we know their trash is going with us, right? Um, so the Ridge Runner, when he talked to us, he mm -hmm. wanted us to set up our tent, um, and we set it up in a very flat space um, on the Appalachian Trail. It's the flat space has been there forever. Um, and he wanted us to back the tent off way off the Appalachian Trail and set it up over there. So hikers, so the AT through hikers would have more of a choice right. on whether they wanted to stop or keep going. Um, and I, to be honest with you, if you smell hot dogs, that <laughs> tent could be 100 yards off the AT. I'm going to get a hot dog. Well, I think the point is, is that... Um, you know, the ATC is starting to feel that the hikers are feeling pressure to stop along the way and, and eat not eat their food, their that, they food that they bring, which they and then they leave it on the trail. Right. That well, was the argument he made. And I actually would like to invite him to stay for half a day if he's, he would and um, or just anybody stay for half a day and and see that. Um, a good 20% of people just keep hiking straight through um, and 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 they don't stop for trail magic. Um, I think the idea here is that, that um, the ATC, and I see comments coming in and we'll get back to all those in a mm -hmm. second, but yep. um, you know, the ATC is trying to limit, their ideas is not, they are, their message is not to eliminate trail magic at all. And I want it to be very clear that they are all for trail magic. I'm sorry, hiker feet. Hiker feet. <laughs> well, and, and trail magic in general, but, but in other off forms. The trail. But what the and ATC is, what the ATC is, is suggesting is that those that are providing what we refer to as trail magic, um, maybe consider, um, you providing it in a different form or 
re- off the trail to not interfere with the hiker's experience. Right. So, and I think that's the main message from the ATC. You, absolutely. And the Ridge Runner um, was was specific to say no food. You know, because he didn't consider us providing food, drink to the through hikers as trail magic. He defined that as hiker feed. So he had suggested that we donate all of our food <laughs> to a food bank mm-hmm. and just provide like shuttle services or or whatever. And um, I guess my response was that, well, you know, we're both Leave No Trace trainers. And so we are we always make sure that things are picked up garbage is picked up i mean i can't even well, tell you how we much actually we go, picked up garbage we on actually the trail. do a mile circumference yeah. we walk a mile circumference around our area yeah. and actually dispose of all trash before we leave that's right so. um and so so here's the here's the thing so um <clears throat> with the leave no trays um and 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 this is the only issue i had was what when you when he wanted us to back off our back off the the tent um and my argument was that is that you are creating a new footpath. So um, if you back off your your tent or your your we have a big canopy, um, and and back it off. Now you're 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 rerouting everybody that was going to hike right past your table on the AT. Um, and I still think the same amount of people are going to come and get trail magic. I don't think that's gonna that's gonna stop. And you're rerouting that. Now you're making another trail path off the AT, which is completely against Leave No Trace. The other thing I would say to this is that some of the Ridge Runners that are telling us to, to back off and not provide food, um, I, 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 I don't know if they've ever through hiked the AT. And my, my thing is, is that you are burning 6,000 calories a day when you, when you hike. And so um, your traditional three, ma- three meals a day and snacks isn't even sustaining your calorie um, discharge. So, you know, you're you're burning six thousand calories a day. You're never going to be able to eat six thousand calories in a day. So, um, you know, when you're through hiking, the only thing you think about is food. Um, I mean, and it's not healthy food. I'm not when I'm when I hiked the AT. I didn't think about carrots and celery. I thought about pizza, hot dogs, McDonald's, Burger King, and and melted and magma cheese on everything I eat. Right. <laughs> so. Um, I guess my thing is that trail magic and the and and the food that's part of that's part of the Appalachian Trail culture, you know that's that you know that is part of the culture that the AT brings. It's all about you know Damascus when you get to trail days. I mean they have like a cookout almost every mile or every few blocks yeah. to feed the hikers, and so I that's mean my well thing. that's an organized event um, yeah. that is. Well, I mean, this is organized event too, but that is a more organized yeah. event. I'm losing my words. But okay, so just to reround, um, obviously the folklore has um, become, well, folklore is what it is. It, it gets bigger than than what it is. And so for the hikers, you know, trail magic is food. It is services it is you know it is all these things but they they love the food part right but what atc is is starting to request is that trail magic be defined um as providing a service such as a transport or an unexpected act of kindness unfood related um and hiker feed becomes providing food on the trail because if you go to the ATC websites they do have documents and they are for preparing food on the trail and providing food on the trail but it is to be referred to as hiker feed so the ATC is trying to separate the two ideas hiker feed versus trail magic um, to become two separate identities which I don't think you can do because Only the because folklore has become so big it, and the hikers the trail magic is part of the Appalachian Trail. It's just a part of it. It's almost like, you know, um, it, it, it's just a part of it. And you're not going to be able to get you'll never be able to get away with that. And and um, so I'd probably push back on, on that whole thing because, um, you know, trail magic is it is spontaneous. I don't think I'm ruining anybody's wilderness experience by setting up trail magic seven miles away from spring or mountain. 
um, only because most of those people need the encouragement the most. Now, you know, when you're in the whites in, you know, New Hampshire, you know, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't do trail magic up there because, you know, you've hiked you know, almost the whole AT by then, you know. But, you know, seven miles, you would be surprised how many people are unprepared, they're scared, they um, they don't know their gear yet. They have a ton of questions about where they're going and how they're going to get there. Um, we ran into many, many people that haven't they, they didn't know how to use their stoves. They didn't know how to set up their tent. And so we feel pretty good about doing trail magic at that location because, you know, we're, we're not only giving them a hot dog or giving them a hot drink, but we're also giving them moral encouragement to keep going and say, hey, man, it's going to be okay. You We've know? had a lot of people need encouragement yeah. to continue going. Abs and Absolutely. Um, but I would say before I, I there's some comments coming through that I want to respond sure. to but um you, you know do, but, but yeah but before we do that um the flip end of trail magic um obviously we're there for the hikers and to provide um uh, excitement encourage unexpected acts of kindness um to the through hikers but you know we we always go with the intention of of supporting them and um you know benefiting them but i i beg to differ that we probably receive more in return from it yeah, um, trail magic works both ways and and it and it truly does and it, and it's both for the givers and the takers and and um i leave after two days of doing trail magic i leave so unbelievably inspired by these people's uh, stories um, right. because what it does is you have you know people coming in stopping taking off their packs for you know a lot of, we you know we provide um, chairs for them to sit in and and um, they they love some people walk straight on through other people linger for a few minutes and other people right. linger for 45 minutes to an hour right. and what it does is it connects the hikers together um they start to they've heard stories from up ahead or down below and they and they yep. end up they go oh i've heard about you or oh i connected with this person and they told me to give you this message and it and it becomes this like community to communicate for the yep. hikers and then we get to talk to them get to know them as a person right. uh, get to know their reasons and a lot of their stories are so yeah, absolutely inspiring yeah. for and, why and, they're and that's what out makes there. it trail magic well, and it's instead magic of a hiker for us. feed, you know, we're right. not feeding cattle; we're feeding human beings. And <laughs> okay. so, and then I'll say one more thing. We'll take some questions. Um, yeah. If if I saw trail magic at every single road and every single um, you know forest road that when I hiked the AT, I would it would take me away from my wilderness experience. Okay, I get that, but that's not the case in two thousand over in two thousand one hundred miles. Believe me. You're going to be hiking in some wilderness, and you're going to get the wilderness experience. <laughs> so, you know, um, I, you know, I, I guess if that was the case, I, I, I agree. The other thing, too, is that we have a lot of day hikers and a lot of clubs in, in Georgia. Um, and we would suggest please don't hang food on the trees or leave food on the trail and think that's trail magic. Because that's not really the case. Um, you know, um, have it organized and, and make sure you leave no trace. But hanging food on a tree or um, putting a nut bag on a tree, um, if that hiker doesn't see it, animals are going to get into it. And I think that was one of the Ridge Runners' um, issues too, is that day hikers that want to be a part of the Appalachian Trail are leaving food on the trail for the through hikers and animals are getting into it. So don't do that. Okay, that's not trail magic. Um, it's just food for food for wildlife. Yeah, and I think Very that's the big point. thing to to make sure we said. So let's. There's so questions. much. Yeah, but there's yeah. a lot of good. So uh, hopefully I don't want to say Oscar. Hello, uh, Tanya. Hello, Jill. Hello, George. Hello, and whoever else, um, Becky and Tammy. I'm glad you could join. So, um, uh, let's see. We have a lot of comments coming in. Um, <laughs> uh. I love fresh fruits part of the way through hike. It's too heavy to carry, which that goes so fast. Yep. Um, and uh, 
Oscar said he saw us on Bigfoot's YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah. Yeah. We ran Bigfoot. into Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah he was he, doing... He's he was He was actually doing, um, like, the first quarter of Georgia um, to be able to meet right. up with his girlfriend and yep. provide trail yep. magic yep. as well um, for the hikers coming through. And he's on our YouTube channel, too. We took a video of him, so... Um, Lori said it's legendary. I imagine she's referring to um, the trail folklore magic, of trail yeah. magic. And mm -hmm. now James. Now let me see if I can sum this one up. Um, so James Workman um, provides trail magic every year as well with a group. And um, uh, we encourage people camping with us to experience the event as they may not be able to hike uh, the trail for various reasons. Absolutely. And uh, we encourage families to bring their children and let the people from all over the world and learn from what that means to them. We have adopted, um, let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Um, uh, we have never had a year without there being someone we've not been able to take off or had to take off the mountain for various reasons to us. This is trail magic. Yep. It's hush now. Sorry for the rant. You guys, <laughs> all hush now. Sorry for the rant. You guys have had, uh, a great day and see outdoors. Absolutely. Yep. But you know, there's it. And, and I just 100% will always view it as trail magic yeah. just as, as workman does because well, I'm not changing it. I know you're not, but it is magic because when it's personal to you or them or for whatever reason, mm -hmm. it is magic in whatever form that takes. And Lori said it's a chance to sit and listen to their stories, which, I mean, absolutely. Isn't the whole AT all about connecting and it's... Well, it's a community. It's, it's, it is a huge community. Right. I'm sorry. I'm yep. getting really yep. excited. Um, love the idea of trail magic, Becky said. And yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for your may comments, have you missed guys. some Absolutely. more comments, but but I think that the general consensus is is that um, ATC. I firmly believe in education that you are providing for the through hikers, and I really encourage you to to get people to um, to think about trail magic in a more um, a maybe helpful way. But to me and to Scott and I. And to the through hikers that we actually connect to in a very, very meaningful, personal way, um, it will always be trail magic to us. And, you know, we never, ever provide services like this or, or trail magic without fully being backed with, with well, no trace principles. Well, and that's the thing. And you hit the nail Good on the head. Back. So along with trail magic, what I would love to see yeah. um, next to our... Um, hot dog tent and our hot drink tent <laughs> is the Leave No Trace Subaru right there. I would love that. <clears throat> conducting awareness classes to every Next single year. group of people that came in. <clears throat> I've been doing trail magic for a long time. I've never seen Leave No Trace there. Never. Yeah. Ever. Well, the so, ATC <clears throat> is that that is no, the I know, Leave No Trace. But I'm talking about the Subaru. I'm talking about the, the Leave No Trace Subarus that come out that travel all over the country. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see them on the Appalachian Trail, you know, uh, teaching awareness classes because you know it's one thing when it comes from us or it's coming it's it's coming from somebody, you know, other than the Subaru. And I think that would make a really powerful impact to uh, and it would send a clear message that Leave No Trace is serious about you know that part of the AT and because um, it's the beginning you want to teach you in the beginning you have a chance to teach people good habits mm -hmm. right away mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. along with through hikers that we see we see a lot of day hikers and we see a lot of people that could care less about that trail pass us absolutely and absolutely. so you know and mm -hmm. those are the people that mm -hmm. we pick mm -hmm. up after mm -hmm. you know so you know I think yep. leave no trace would would be well worth it to park a Subaru at some of these trailheads um, it's easy to drive up there mm -hmm. and just say, look, we just want, here's, here's some leave no trace cards, you know, just could, mm -hmm. if you could put that on your pack, um, on a carabiner and let everybody else know the seven principles of leave no trace, that would be great. Which we are actually, we have discussed and we are incorporating in with last, yeah. uh, next year's Absolutely. is handing out those tags. Yeah. Um, and carabiner on, on all the backpacks. Absolutely. So. So, okay, anyway. I'm sure we've rambled long enough. So, so the the idea is is that you know it's 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 a it's personal, it's magic, and it's something that 
the hikers really, really enjoy. I look forward to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's all we've got to say about that. Ramble over. <laughs> um, I know. You had okay, some other so, stuff you wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, so that trail magic. So I want to talk about going, um, do a little housekeeping for our show and <laughs> talk a little bit about um, our live um, feeds that we do yeah. uh, once a week. So. Mm-hmm. Here's a gig. So um, we um, we go live in all kinds of places. Um, if we could do a live show every day up on a mountain, we'd be there instead of here, for sure. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. here's the thing. Um, there's a couple of things <laughs> that um, that you need to know about us and about our live shows. Um, when you're on top of a mountain, it's windy. <laughs> well, and wait a minute, let me finish. It's windy. <laughs> okay. And um, you don't have great service. You don't. You certainly don't have an Ethernet cable running into your computer. So thank God. You know. So it's 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 challenging. Now we have spent some money on gear um, to bring you a the best quality show we can from our smartphone, um, and it's just not always easy to do. Only because of all of the elements of nature, the elements of service. And the um, and and just the fight to mm-hmm. the fight even to get to service. We have AT and T. You know, they suck as far as <laughs> being on the trail. It's the second time we've tested AT and T on the well, show. Well, I don't care. But you know, <laughs> if you're hiking the Appalachian Trail, switch to Verizon. <laughs> you know, if you if you you know want to maintain a cell connection. Um, but so we're we are constantly <laughs> challenged by. Um, live streaming. Now, the, the funny thing about live streaming and the funny thing about technology and your phone is that it's mobile. It's mobile. Everything's mobile. Mobile, 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 right? You gotta be mobile. You gotta be do the boom, boom, boom. I can be mobile. I can do it until you wanna go live. Yeah. That's the only time. <laughs> That's what that we're it's learning. Probably not mobile. <laughs> so it's easy to do a show like this in our in our house or in our basement or, yeah. or whatever. That's easy to do. But um I so, mean we've had a few hiccups, but we've learned from them well, and we've you know, they're easy to resolve. Yeah, it's easy to resolve, but so but we have invested money in gear and even that really expensive gear. I think we've dropped about five hundred bucks on outdoor gear so we can go live. But you're but it's still I guess my point is that the audio is still probably gonna suck. Um, it's still going to be uh, fuzzy sometimes. It's called be- a, a microphone to pick up sound. Therefore, a sound that carries through, like wind. Well, you know, is and going you can't, can't do anything mic. about nature, right? So, yeah. so anyway, um, some of the videos may be a little out of focus sometimes because of bandwidth. Some of the videos might be a little crackly sometimes because of audio. Mm-hmm. But we're not going to mm-hmm. change. We're going to keep on going because we think it's more important to show you a sunset or sunrise. <laughs> Than it Which is to hear our crackling few, voices. Very few people have <laughs> right. seen to like actually like right. see one recently. Right. So we think it's more important to be uh, to go live wherever we to can, an extent, whenever we can, to an extent, to an extent, yeah. um, and, and but, try to do that. And because we we that's what that's the goal of the of the show is to motivate people to go outdoors and you know to to go see the sunrises and see sunsets and we want to share that with you and we want to help you get to where you need to go so if we have to start doing that on mute yeah with maybe, maybe we go live captions, and not talk captions <laughs> right. rolling through <laughs> well, we all right try that. <laughs> i think <laughs> i think the point is is that Absolutely. we have a couple contents out there that obviously are pretty crappy um due to the elements of nature the 30 mile per hour winds in the winter right and we apologize greatly for that because it's really the content that we're wanting to bring to you um except however, we're still going to keep doing it <laughs> However, we we really want to be outdoors in this live show for a portion for a large portion of those times because yeah. that's that's who we are. That's what we want to bring to you. So um, hang in there, keep joining us, and we are going to do our best to keep combating these elements. Um, but live is not as easy as one would think. No, in, no, it's especially not out in nature. It, yeah, especially <laughs> it's hard enough indoors. But when you yeah. throw the mother nature elements out there, it's even yeah. it's even harder. So anyway. uh, Dale joined us, and I forgot to say hi. Hi, Dale. Hi, Dale. Um, yeah. So, that so um, maybe one side of leave no trace. The flip side of personal note of encouragement. Yeah. Back to trail mm-hmm. magic. Right, back to you. Um, and. Tanya, I really appreciate the good mix of shows um, on and off the trails, even if you can't hear us. Yeah, we try. <laughs> We're going to start captioning. I think the captions are good. I don't know how to do that. I, but uh, anyway, um, that is our show. I cannot wait to go open up our compost toilet from Airhead. Oh, I'm boy. so excited. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> busy day here. <laughs> but that is it. Thank you for everybody who has watched us. Hopefully, um, this new noon um, Eastern Standard Time will Works be a better. little bit more beneficial to everybody. Um, so we're really excited to get yeah. to see that. And the comments coming in. Um, we appreciate you guys joining in um, because that way it's more well-rounded of a show yep. and we can answer your questions up So if you're new to backpacking um, or if you know somebody who's going to be new to backpacking, um, have us sign up for our three biggest mistakes uh, email. We send you uh, three videos on what we know are the three biggest mistakes we mm -hmm. see new backpackers make. So if you know somebody's getting into it, have them go to that and we'll shoot them their uh, those videos free of charge. Um, and then also, um, I'm gonna post a link to our YouTube channel. Um, go check that out. Um, we have a Trail Magic video and you can see some uh, people that we met on the trail. We um, met and see that. Lewis and um, Mariska, I believe Mariska, it was. Right, uh, right. Lewis and Mariska, they, uh, we were just doing a day hike with our dogs after Trail Magic. And they recognized us from our live show. And they and recognized yeah. us from the live show and, of course, wanted to take selfies with us, which we totally obliged to because it was so cool getting to fun. meet them. But anyway, um, so yeah. It was kind of cool because all the like <laughs> regular through hikers really, were at the this, shelter, and then we had a bunch of like a band of hippies that were camping off the trail, which, and we ran into them. And it was coffee. great. It was all great. right. So, anyway, and so James, much. give us a shout out if you have any more questions regarding it. But um, I know you do good at your own trail magic. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, guys, we will see you next uh, Thursday at twelve Bye. p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for so much for uh, joining, and remember, trust As the trail. Always. Absolutely. We'll Bye, you guys. Bye.